Hello! Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm talking about fantasy books that I would recommend to other people. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time viewing, I am not a booktuber. I do not normally talk about books in this way. I do writing advice videos. I am a traditionally published fantasy author. I have lots of books out there. You can go and Google me. However, a lot of people ask me sometimes, what have I read, what have I been reading, or what would I recommend for certain types of fantasy? Like some people have come to me and say, I want to get into fantasy, where do I start? And that's such a broad question. It's like if someone says, I really want to read comics, where should I start? And the worst recommendation I've ever heard for comics is when someone says, I want to, I want to read, you know, adult comics, American comics, where should I, where should I start? And some people say, read Watchmen! That's, that's the worst idea for so many reasons. And it's the same with fantasy. If someone says, I want to read fantasy, my next question is always, what kind of fantasy? What kind of stories are you interested in? So I'm going to dig into some fantasy sub... sub? I'm going to dig into some fantasy sub-genres today and the books that I would recommend as my go-tos for those different areas. Let's start with fantasy sagas. These are the big boys and girls in terms of both the number of books but also how big the books is. Some of them are quite kind of chunky. Fantasy can be very, very short reads, 300, 350 pages, up to like seven, eight, nine hundred, even sometimes a thousand pages, although when they come into kind of paperback, you usually have to split them into two. But in terms of, someone says, right, I really want to get in something that's long running, that's, you know, 10, 12, 20 books, whatever it might be, that I can just soak myself into a really complicated world or really lots of character depth and world building and all that kind of stuff that makes it really kind of rich. And I've got a few recommendations that I would always point to as you know my preferences for some of the best or just some of the most interesting in terms of the diverse content that they have. So the most obvious for me is of course Robin Hobb, who is one of the masters of the fantasy genre. She has written some of the best fantasy books ever, in my opinion, and her Realm of the Elderlings series, oh, if I can say it, is like 17 books or something. It's really quite long. It starts with Assassin's Apprentice in the, there's like a first trilogy. Then there's a, another trilogy set within the same world that's not directly linked to it, but it kind of is. And then it goes back to the Assassin books, then it goes back to the Dragon books, and on and on, kind of back and forth, adding layers, but also adding connective tissue between these two stories. And very quickly you realise that they are all connected. There are some characters that are in both, and it's all part of this enormous world. Now, she's been writing these books for the last part of, like, 25 years or something, and this enormous saga came to an end very, very recently, in the last couple of years. Now, for those who haven't been waiting for the books, they have the joy of being able to kind of burn through a trilogy and go, right, I want the next one, and you don't have to wait. They're all there. You can just go and pick them up, and they are absolutely fantastic. They'll break your heart. Every single book and every single part of the series will crush your spirit and make you cry and think, why on earth has Stephen recommended these books to me? Is there something wrong with him? We love, you know, readers' tears. That's what we authors, we thrive on it. Robin Hobb in particular, she loves it. Her books are so good, so, so good. So yes, check them out for a fantastic saga. Another one that's been going on for longer than I've been alive at this point is the Shannara books by Terry Brooks. Now he started all the way back in, I think it was 1978 maybe, with the Sword of Shannara. And some people have said that, oh, it was just a copy of Lord of the Rings. Maybe, yes, that's a huge complicated argument to be had. However, since then, he's gone on to write about 20 books set within the world of Shannara. So even though The Sword of Shannara was written so long ago, I would suggest you go back and start with that. And it might feel a bit clunky and a bit outdated, but you must remember the era was when it was written, all the way through to the kind of more modern books that he's been writing over the decades. And this world is enormous. It's sprawling adventures and there's dark stories. And while some of the earlier books, you know, I were some of my favourites and they were quite chunky books, as the series has progressed and he's done different trilogies, the world has changed and the characters have changed and the races and everything that you might once have said was a kind of a Me Too product, which is what some of the accusations people have made. Over the course of the many books and the many years, he's made it completely his own. The magic, the world, all of it is fantastic. And also, 
unlike Tolkien in some ways, we have kind of, you know, the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, the Silmarillion, and we don't really have any other stories. In the world of Shannara, it spans a longer period of time and we have progressive stories. So the same characters don't exist in every single book. There's like a trilogy, I think, and then, you know, the next book might be that person's ancestors and then a hundred years later someone else's ancestors have a similar name they're kind of the first seven or eight books feature familiar characters or people you will recognize in one capacity or another and then the world moves on and the story moves on and the magic moves on and it's such a huge sprawling adventure across all of these books that if you want something that evolves over time it's a really good place to start and yes yeah, going back to the beginning can feel a bit rough, but just remember when it was written, and I think that'll be fine. The next fantasy saga I want to talk about is arguably one of the most influential fantasy series ever written in the 20th century. And this is Sorrow, Memory and Thorn by Tad Williams, and he wrote it in the late 80s and early 90s. Now, it's only a trilogy, but it is a trilogy in four books, because the uh, third book was so big, they had to split it into two paperbacks. And this series is fantastic because it reinvented almost everything. Tad is a genius. His writing is incredibly rich and detailed, but it's very accessible at the same time. And what he did was he looked at everything that was out there in terms of fantasy. He also looked at mythology and why did Tolkien draw a certain way on a certain kind of creature for whether it was elves or dwarves or whatever it might be. And he interpreted it in his own way and he pulled on different sources and he created this trilogy that influenced everybody. You name any of the really big fantasy writers out there, whether it's Patrick Rothfuss, whether it's Sanderson, whether it's, you know, whoever you want to name, all of them have been influenced by this trilogy and by Tad Williams by some degree or another, myself included. I read the series when I was a very young man and it's absolutely phenomenal and it blew me away and it's really not what you expect. It's slow to begin with, but it builds and builds and builds and it's incredibly rich and layered and there's so much to kind of chew on as you go along. And it's written very much in the same way as Tad talks. He writes as he talks, he talks as he writes. If you watch any interview with him, you will see what I mean. And for years and years and years, people have been saying, oh, when are you going to do a sequel series to Tower of Memory and Thorn? And he never did because it wasn't right or he didn't have the right story or it wasn't, he didn't feel up to it, whatever it might be. For years and years and years, you know, it's 25 years almost now since he wrote it. He didn't, hasn't written a sequel to that series. He has written many other books. He's written Otherland, which is this phenomenal kind of AI, complicated, ready player one, artificial intelligence, Matrix style book before The Matrix came out. This is what he did. So he writes these really fantastic series. However, I mentioned Sorrow, Memory and Thorn because he has now started writing a new series, which is a sequel to Sorrow, Memory and Thorn. So he, you can now go and read that original incredible series, which is three slash four books. And now he's writing a new series, which is set in the same world of Austin Ard. And the third book in this series, which I think is going to be four now, has just come out and it is Into the Narrow Dark, which I have here in Delicious Hardback. This has come out within the last couple of months. The first two books are obviously already out and he's working on the next book. I think it's either going to be four or five. I need to check, but you get the idea. We've been waiting for this series for over 20 years and he's writing it now. And it is just as good and just as different and just as clever as the original. So highly recommend you go back, read it, take a little breather. Don't just rush into something else. Go and you know, read something else for a palate cleanser and then come and read this new series set, which, sorry, is The Last King of Austin Ard. And then check this out. But then you're going to be waiting like me for the next book and the final book. But still, go back and read Sorrow, Memory and Thorn. The last series I want to talk about in this kind of saga section, there are so many I could recommend, but I'm going to limit it to a few, is The Song of the Shattered Sands. I'm looking to make sure I get the title right. And this is a six book series written by Bradley P. Bowlier. Now I've interviewed Brad and we've spoken many times. I met him, I've done events with him and he started writing this uh, series in 2015 and it concluded 
uh, in 2021. So he's done. It's all there. All six books are done. There are also some novellas that fit within the world, which you can read to flesh out the story and the characters if you choose. But these six books are set within a desert world. And there's so many creative ideas packed into this world. When I spoke to Brad, I kind of asked him about the, the magic systems, because there's more than one that are built into this world. Then there's all of the things to do with world building. The food, the transport, they have ships in the desert that travel across the sand dunes on winds. And of course they have huge skis underneath that allows them to travel across the kind of dune sea. And it's fantastic. It's just little things he's thought about and built into this world. The food, the culture, the customs, incredibly rich. The first book is called Twelve Kings or Twelve Kings in Sharakai. And it's about these 12 immortal kings. And it's not a spoiler to say the main character She's attempting to go against them all and tries to kill all 12, but that's part of the story. That's not the whole story, but hers is kind of the revenge aspect. There's gladiators in this first book. There's different magics going on and you get glimpses of stuff. There's some weird supernatural things that he's made his own. It's incredibly rich. It's incredibly detailed. It's basically one of the best series I've read since about 2015. And I love sitting down with their books because they feel, they have that kind of saga feel, you know, that kind of really epic, really delicious adventure that you love soaking into. And I love it because it's, it's, not, it's not a typical Western setting, as I said, it's set within the desert setting. So it's very, very different. You're not going to get, you know, some farm boy getting his sword and going off on an adventure to become a knight on horseback. It's nothing like that whatsoever. So it feels very fresh and original and new. Uh, there's some things in there that I just, I never saw coming. He's really good at that kind of thing. I recommend this series all the time. Go and check it out if you haven't. Okay, I thought I'd get through these books a lot faster and yet I've only just touched on the saga section. I've got a whole bunch of other fantasy subgenres I want to recommend with books I would encourage you to try. So this is going to be part one of a series of videos I'm going to do now. I'm probably going to disperse it with other things coming up like I'm going to Fantasy Con in a couple of days and I'll post a video about my experiences from that when I get back. But I'll, part, I'll record the other parts now and then release them in the next couple of weeks so that you've got all of them coming up. So that's going to be coming up on the channel very soon.